My name is Tere, and I'm part of the Partners Marketing Team here at Google. Today we have an awesome lineup of speakers here for you. They're here to talk about growing your business with online video, and how YouTube ads can help generate awareness for your brand. We're also going to take a closer look at some of the tips and strategies that you can carry out with your Google Partner to make the most of your advertising budget. But before we get started, there are two things to remember. First, the Google Partners in the room can help answer your questions both during and after our broadcast. I'd like to call out that these folks have all been certified by Google to help grow your business online and are really true experts in the field. Second, we'd love to hear your questions and feedback on Twitter. Just remember, use hashtag PartnersConnect to join the conversation. Now, it's my pleasure to turn things over to our first speaker, Tabitha Solomon. Tabitha is a product marketing manager here at Google and joining us to speak about the power of YouTube and how you can leverage its reach, viewer attention, and targeting to reach your next customer. Tabitha? Thanks, Tere. Hi, my name is Tabitha Solomon, and I'm a product marketing manager on the Google AdWords team. In my role, I'm passionate about helping small businesses and agencies leverage YouTube in reaching their advertising goals. We have a lot of great content in store for you today. We're going to cover some of the macro trends taking place in the video space. We'll then go into the understanding the power of YouTube from its exponential reach and its engaged attention. And then we'll tap into the ad formats available for you and giving you some best practices to make sure you get the highest ROI on your advertising investment dollars. So a lot of great information. Let's get to it. So if we think back maybe just one generation ago, we find that it was very common that the television was a central hub to the household. The mom and dad and kids would plop down in front of the television and watch their favorite TV shows. So what was happening there? Reach was scarce. It was really hard to get your advertising in front of your audience outside of that sacred time together. And attention was plentiful. Right? So the, there were only like three channels you could log into to watch. Fast forward to today, we find that the inverse is actually true. Now with the proliferation of mobile devices, we're finding that reach is plentiful. You have content and video content on demand and attention is scarce. So what does that mean for us as advertisers? It's getting harder and harder to reach your audience. And when you do, the question is, are they actually paying attention? Well, according to Nielsen, 31% of American adults are light TV watchers. That means they spend two hours or less in front of the television. About one-fifth of the U.S. population has never even had cable in their households. And then those who are actually watching television, we find that less than half of them are actually watching the ads. So as a marketer, it's really important for us to be attuned to the trends taking place so we understand where customers are leaving and where they're going to view content. And that's really where YouTube comes in. Now, how many of you guys logged in today actually watched YouTube or watched it in the last month or so? No, really, raise your hand. <laughs> yeah, I am an avid YouTube watcher myself and I bet you and others in the room have watched YouTube in the last month or so. Well when it comes to YouTube there's three key things I want you to walk away with today. One is that YouTube is really really big and has the opportunity to put your product and service in front of your target customers. Two is that YouTube has an engaged viewer base. You actually are able to tap into, an uh, into the attention of people watching and wanting to see your ads. And third is that we have uh, a unique ability to precisely target people that matter to you. I'll also be sure, sure to share some best practices around ad formats to make sure that you're leveraging our ads in the best way possible. All right, so YouTube is big, and YouTube is where people are watching. So just three weeks ago, YouTube CEO Susan Wojcicki announced a few key milestones for YouTube. The first is that one billion hours of time is spent watching YouTube every single day. That is a lot of time. But I think another stat that's probably even more important is that 1.5 billion people are logging into YouTube each month. 
1.5 billion people. Let's try to conceptualize what does that mean. That means one out of every three folks around the world who have internet access are logging into YouTube. And if you're here in the US, that means nine out of 10 folks that have internet access, nine out of 10 are logging into YouTube each month. This is where America goes to get their content. And the last piece of information that I think is equally as important is when people come to YouTube, they're spending a lot of time there. We are finding that when, when viewers come to YouTube, they spend at least one hour on the platform consuming content on mobile devices alone. Okay, pop quiz question for you. What is the world's largest search engine? Okay, obviously that one's an easy one. It's Google. Here's a harder one. What is the second largest search engine? Now, if you were like me, the first time I heard that question, I guess Yahoo, Bing? Turns out YouTube is the second most used search engine in the world behind Google. That really drives home the point that YouTube is a big and powerful platform and it continues to grow. As a matter of fact, YouTube has grown 10x in terms of viewership since 2012. Okay, you get it. YouTube is a big platform. But YouTube doesn't just offer reach. It offers attentive reach. Now, if you're like me, when I'm watching TV and a commercial comes on, that's usually my cue to actually go take a snack break. So what's happening if an ad is playing? I hear it, but I definitely don't see it. And if you're also like me and you're mindlessly scrolling, I see the content, but I don't actually hear it. It's rare that I will actually have headphones on or have the sound on. These are trends that we're seeing across the place and the data actually supports this. Now, something to know is when we're looking at YouTube, it's a lot different. We're finding that when consumers are viewing your ads, 93% actually have viewability, which means their eyes are actually seeing your message and your content. And that's compared to 66% industry average. Now, when it comes to audibility, we're finding that our viewers have the sound on about 95% of the times, hitting it out of the park. So, I then started to ask myself, does it actually matter if the viewer actually has a sound on or off or is actually looking at it? If you remove one of the two, does it impact the brand awareness and recall? And the research shows that it indeed does. What we now know is folks who actually see and hear an ad are twice as likely to remember your brand and three times as likely to remember your ad. So you want to make sure, as an advertiser, you're using a platform where you can both see and hear your message. Great. So YouTube has a wide reach to allow you to reach your customers. And it also has an engaged customer base. Now here at YouTube, we understand that people are consuming content differently. And we're making sure that we adjust our ad formats accordingly. So by leveraging these insights, we're changing things like making sure that we have more capabilities for a viewer to decide whether they watch the ad or not. And we're also giving people snackable versions of ads with just six second formats. So I'll walk you through four of the best YouTube ad formats and share some best practices so you can get the best most out of your advertising dollars. So the first ad format to know is the skippable pre-roll. Now, users want a choice, and choice creates an ecosystem where the, the best and most relevant, useful ads win. So that's the great thing for our users. What's great for you as an advertiser is you only pay when a viewer sees 30 seconds of your ad or they finish your ad, whichever comes first. So this is really a really incredible format because the advertiser gets to choose and if they actually continue to watch the ad, you know that there's interest there and you're only paying when there's interest there. So two best practices to keep in mind here. Because the, the viewer has five seconds to make up their mind whether they continue watching the ad or not, those first five seconds are crucial for you. 
you want to make sure that you have an attention grabbing compelling message that will keep the viewer interested in watching more secondly if your primary objective here is to drive brand awareness make sure to throw your name in there and highlight the name of your business within the first five seconds that way even if someone decides to skip it you have still gotten more brand exposure all right so the next ad format to know is the pre-roll bumper ad so we know that viewers have a shorter attention span and we know that folks are more likely to abandon longer ads so this is what helped us drive the creation of the six second pre-roll ad so the question I often get is can you really say anything worthwhile in six seconds well the answer is yes not only can you say something worthwhile but we know that nine out of ten viewers actually can recall an ad after just being exposed to the six second pre-roll so a couple of best practices for you if you decide uh, to roll a, a six second ad after leveraging a skippable uh, ad that we just talked about leverage the six second ads to make it snackable and fresh content to remind folks of your particular brand so let me show you two of my favorite bumper ads and these two will show you that bumper ads can work whether you're a small business or a large corporation. Make wiping your little one's nose a much less painful experience. Get Boogie Wipes today. Great. So that's Boogie Wipes. It's a small business that does the six second bumper ad incredibly well. They manage to get both the name of their business and what the product is used for within just six seconds. Great job, Boogie Whites. Next, we'll take a look at Tide and how they leverage the six second ad. He may or may not have just dug up the petunias. Tide Rescue restores up to three shades of white. Again, a large organization or a small organization can leverage the six second ads to really refresh their message. But we'll admit it. Bumper ads are hard to create in the sense that you have to say more with less. So you have to be really polished and creative to get your right message across. But you know what? This allows you to get different varieties of your content in front of viewers. So think about it. You might want to take that 15 or 30 second ad and slice it up into snackable pieces and continue to reiterate key parts of your message at different times to different audiences. Um, so you're not spending a lot of money recreating uh, production, uh, production costs, but you're repurposing content you already have in a um, cost effective manner. All right. So the next ad format is the companion matter. If you take a look at your screen here, there is a picture on the right hand side. And in there, you'll see on the top right, there is a red box and inside that box is BCAA. That is an example of a companion banner. And it actually comes with all skippable ads at no additional cost. It is complimentary anytime you run a skippable ad. That is a pro tip most people aren't aware of. And something else to note is that companion banner stays whether the per throughout the video whether the person decides to view the ad or not. So another great way to get your brand out there. All right, and the last ad format we'll talk about today is the call to action overlay. So if you look at the picture on the right hand side, that small black box is what we call the CTA overlay. So this is an added benefit we provide to all of our, our advertisers to ensure that people who come to your web or people who see your ad have an ability to have an action, whether you want them to sign up for a newsletter, visit your website, or actually purchase a product. This pop-up message is very similar to YouTube display ads and is designed to drive call an, uh, your audience to take action. Okay, so we've talked about how big YouTube is. We've talked about the engaged audience who's looking and seeing, who's seeing and hearing your ads. And we've talked about the different ad formats and best practices around each. Now we're gonna get into precise targeting. Because, you, because Google owns YouTube, we understand customers' behavior. And as a result, 
we have the ability to help you precisely zoom into the audience and potential customers that matter to you most. So here are the three targeting methodologies that I'd love to discuss with you. The first one is core affinity and in-market audience. So that might sound like a lot of jargon, let's break it down. Core affinity is really understanding your potential customer, and in this case, the viewer's interest and passion. So I'll give you an example. I myself am a novice tennis player. So just last week, I went to search and I said, what is the best tennis racket for a novice? Now, next time I go to YouTube and I'm watching a CNN uh, video, I'll get, a, uh, uh, I'll get an advertisement that's telling me about some of the best rackets on the market. And I love that because this is really tailored to me and what interests me today. Now, the next customer may just be a casual uh, reader of a popular gossip blog, for instance. And they may see an article that Serena Williams is now pregnant. Congratulations, Serena. And in that article, they're just wanting to know what's going on with pop culture. That doesn't mean that person's actually a tennis fanatic. And so Google is able to understand this and use that to filter out when you're using your YouTube advertising. And then there might be the third um, viewer who's actually the tennis enthusiast. They watch rematches, they know the stats, they love the sport. And so here a high-end tennis product may be marketed to them on the YouTube platform. That's the power of the relationship between Google and YouTube. We really allow you to market to your customers in a way that no one else can. Now you might recall that I mentioned there were two different targeting methodologies that were hot off the press. Here they are. I'm excited to share them with you as they were launched just last month. So the first one is life events that you'll find in the middle there. There are three opportunities for you to now market to folks in key points of their lives. The first is when they're getting married, the second is when moving, and the third is graduating college. Again, this allows you as an advertiser to be strategic and poignant in when you're targeting customers to make sure that you're getting the most out of your dollars. And then the third targeting technology is our consumer patterns. So again, I'll use myself as an example. I am someone who likes to go to the big box retailer for everything, whether it's to buy my groceries or to buy clothes or school supplies, you name it. But the next guy may want to actually go to three different spots to achieve all three of those different tasks. And see, Google's with the intelligence, with search and maps, we're able to understand these important information about your customers. So you're putting relevant information to them while on the YouTube platform. This is really powerful, guys. You're able to tap into interests, passion, life stages, and patterns to make sure you're targeted efficiently and powerfully. Well, we've covered a lot of ground, and I hope you understand the power of YouTube. I hope you understand the power of this reach with the 1.5 billion folks coming to the platform each month around the world. And the engaged attention, the fact that over 90% of YouTube's audience actually sees and hears the message you put in front of them. And I hope you understand the power of the targeting to make sure that you're able to get your core message to the right audience at the right time. Now, if you have any additional questions, please make sure to reach out to your Google partner today. All right. Awesome. Thanks, Tabitha. It's really amazing how you can use the reach, targeting, and viewer attention of YouTube to make sure your message is heard by the right audience. Before moving on, I'd like to take a moment to highlight one important thing about our partners. Yes, they're all certified by Google, but what exactly does that mean? Well, it means a few things. To be certified as a Google partner, they must follow our best practices pass a comprehensive advertising exam, manage a significant AdWords investment, and prove their ability to help business like, businesses like yours succeed online time and time again. And with that said, I'd like to introduce our next presenter, Bettina Hahn. Bettina is joining us today to share some of the best practices around setting up your YouTube campaigns and some quick ways that you can implement with your partners right away. Bettina, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tori. 
Um, my name is Bettina. I work in the Global Product Solutions and Innovations team here in Mountain View, California. My team specializes in video creation and YouTube campaign strategies. And I'd like to um, continue by providing you with a few tips and tricks of how you can grow your business with YouTube. So first, I, wanna, I want us to take a step back and I want you to understand um, the role of video as a marketing tool overall. So video advertising is very different compared to a search advertising, display or a marketing advertising. So if you're a cooking school, for example, you want to be on Google search to connect with folks that are already looking for cooking schools or cooking lessons in San Francisco. And you want to leverage YouTube to display your cooking lessons um, to generate awareness. So YouTube is the place you want to be to put your message in front of the right people. So YouTube can support upper funnel objectives, but it can flex its muscle throughout the whole funnel. So it's the place to be if you want to generate awareness for your product or service, if you want to drive consideration, or if you want to drive additional traffic to your website. So if we take all the Google products and by any means, we have a lot. We have Google Search, we have Display, we have Google Shopping, and you place them along a funnel. It will look something like this. And the funnel basically illustrates a customer journey. As you can see, YouTube is on top of that funnel. It's the beginning of the customer journey. Um, so basically, um, it helps you reach out to the relevant customers that are undecided, that don't know yet that you have the product or service that they're looking for. Whereas um, search, display and remarketing or shopping ads, they help drive this like potential audience down the funnel towards the final conversion. Remarketing helps you reconnect with um, users that have been on your website but haven't really um, decided yet that um, you have the product that, that they want. So it helps you grow um, loyalty among your target audience. So let's look at an actual um, example and take it from like an abstract example to something more hands-on. But before looking at that example, I'd like to ask you a few questions. So think back, when was the last time you saw a YouTube ad, you clicked on it and purchased immediately? Show your hands. And when was the last time you um, were in Google search, um, you specifically looked for a product or service, um, and you clicked on it and you purchased? Well, I certainly purchased more from the Google search network than from YouTube directly. And the reason for that is that we're in different stages of our customer journey. YouTube helps you connect with the people that are undecided yet. They're passionate about something, but they don't know yet that they actually want to purchase what you're offering. Whereas on Google search, um, you just have to raise your hand as an advertiser and the higher and the faster you raise it, the more likely it is that the user is coming to your website. So let's look at this example. This is an example of someone that is in the market for buying, let's say a family van, and that lives in San Francisco. So this car dealer knows a thing about YouTube advertising, and he puts his message in front of that specific user. And because that user is only at the beginning of the customer journey, um, he will continue his research on the Google search network, type in Sunnyvale Motors, and because the car dealer has also Google um, search um, campaigns up and running, so he will appear in one of the first um, search results. So because that user has seen this brand um, already on YouTube before, the likelihood of that user clicking on that specific search ad is pretty high. So let's say the user visits the website of the car dealer for the first time. The car dealer also has a remarketing strategy in place. So the cookie has been stored in the remarketing list. So at that time, from that moment on, the car dealer is able to reconnect with that user to remind him that he has the family van he's looking for. So let's say at some point after having received um, certain remarketing um, ads from that car dealer, the user comes back to the website and finally schedules a test drive and purchases the car. So this is obviously a best case scenario. Um, not all the customer's journey look um, like that, but this is just to like illustrate and to show you how you can connect your YouTube strategy with all the other Google products that we have in place. And obviously purchasing a car is, um, is not a, a decision that you're taking from one day to the other. It actually takes time. So it takes like on average two months. So this should help you reconnect with the customer and help make him the decision um, to finally purchase your, your car, your brand. So 
You want to show your message only to the relevant people and not to throw advertising money out of the window. So this car dealer, he has done a great job only connecting to people that are interested in purchasing a car and only to people in San Francisco. So how did he do that? Tabitha already uh, elaborated a little bit more on like the targeting strategies. I want to take it a little bit step further. So in the past, advertising has been all about reach generating reach, reaching the mass. Nowadays, we want to be a whole lot more precise and a whole lot more personal. In order to be able to be precise and personal, we have to have access to the right information. You as marketeers, you have to know what your user wants at all different stages in the customer journey. And if you have access to that knowledge, you can build very powerful brand strategies. So how does Google and ultimately you have get access to to those informations well nowadays consumers spend basically all of their time consuming digital content we watch videos we purchase products we plan trips we share content with our friends and families and all these um, movements create millions of consumer signals and based on the signals google knows what people want and what they need so basically we leverage those signals gather information of consumer recent purchase behavior and in that way are able to understand what they're passionate about, what they're in market for buying and what content they're choosing to interact with. So if we look at this slide, those are the three main targeting strategies we have on YouTube. So if you look at the first one, yes, we can target demographics, we can target age groups, gender, household income, parental status, and we can target different locations. That's pretty straightforward. The other two are a little bit more sophisticated. So um, the first one is the interest-based targeting. So here you can target interests and passions of people. As we heard earlier, we have affinity and we have in-market segments. So here the Google algorithm looks at um, people's behavior online. So let's say someone is passionate about gardening. So someone that's passionate about gardening will look at various websites, we'll read up on blogs, we'll really in-depth consume uh, knowledge, we'll have a long session duration. So our search engine knows that this specific user is, in, is passionate about gardening. Whereas in market, this is let's say someone that is interested in purchasing a loan owner. So the search behavior is very different. This person, this user, will be browsing various websites that are selling loan mowers, will probably have been to price comparison sites, and will probably have abandoned one or two shopping carts already. Um, so our system knows this person, this user, is interested in market of purchasing uh, this specific product. We have a huge list of various affinity segments and in-market segments, but if one of those segments um, does not really fit your, your business model, we have custom affinity segments where you can basically customize your own target audience. Remarketing, as we've mentioned earlier, is also a very powerful way to reconnect with your audience that has already been on your website. The third and last targeting strategy is the so-called content targeting. So we, we can use a combination of placement, keywords and, um, and topic targeting. So here, this is a very good strategy if you know already what type of content your consumers are, are consuming online. So if you know that your um, target audience is really interested in cars, then you can select the topic category cars and your video will only play in front of videos that are related to automotive. Whereas placements, you can select hand-picked movies that you know your target audience is consuming and only play in front of, let's say, five or ten specific video URLs. So there are a lot of different targeting strategies out there and depending on your customer's marketing budget, but also on their marketing goals, you have to be able to select the right strategy for your customer. Earlier we've used the funnel to put all the Google products into context and now we want to do the same with using the YouTube strategies, the YouTube targeting strategies. So as you can see on top of the funnel we have demographics, geographics and affinity targeting. Those are the broadest targeting strategies that we have on the YouTube platform all the way down to remarketing which is the most narrow targeting option. So the rule of thumb here in terms of bidding is the broader the reach the lower the bid. So I get, I get this question quite a bit. So if you starting on YouTube, if this is your first YouTube campaign and you don't really know what targeting strategy works well for your advertiser, we always recommend A-B testing. In terms of campaign structure, we recommend two to three ad groups, 
one targeting strategy per ad group, have the campaign run for a few days, and look at metrics like the CPV and the view-through rate to um, be able to optimize and modify. In case one of the ad groups doesn't get enough impressions, try increasing the bid. So we have talked a lot about campaigns, we have talked a lot about um, targeting, but what if you don't have the video creative? What if you don't have the right content to start um, running a YouTube campaign? Well, we have done some extensive research um, internally and what we found is mostly large brands are on YouTube. The Coca-Colas, the L'Oreal's, the GoPros of this world. Why is that? Well, because they have access to great creative agencies um, and they have the, um, the right marketing budgets in place. Small companies are not really present on YouTube mainly for three reasons. First of all, they don't have a video asset. They don't have a great video creative. They don't have the skill to create one and they don't have the marketing budget. So to put, to put all these things in context and to come back to my earlier point of um, how expensive and difficult video creation is. When creating a video, you pay for the planning and concepting, you pay for the filming and you pay for the editing. So all in all, you pay on average around $2,000 per video. And usually you want to use multiple videos to tell your story throughout the year. So it's a significant investment, especially for small businesses. We wanted to change that. We wanted to make video accessible for everyone. We think everyone should have the opportunity to tell their story with a video. So our team sat down and created an easy way of creating videos for everyone. So let me introduce you to the director product solutions. We have two product solutions. One is an iOS based app. It's a free video creation app that lets you create high quality content for your business. The second solution is Director on Site. Here you can get a video shot by a professional filmmaker with a small advertising commitment of $150. So let's talk a little bit more about the app. Yes, we do have an app um, that guides you step by step through the whole video creation process. It, we have over 100 templates that are tailored to specific um, verticals and to specific business goals. We have videos that help you tell your, your business story, that help you introduce your business to new customers. We have videos that can help introduce new products. We have a whole um, lot of different video optimization targetings. The app tells you exactly what to film when to film it and even how to hold your camera to capture the best angle. It puts everything together, it even walks you through the audio recording and it helps you choose the right music for, from a huge YouTube music library. So basically you can create a video in less than 20 minutes and have it up and running on your YouTube channel. It's ridiculously easy to use and um, it's really hands-on. See for yourself. The second solution is Director on Site. So Director Insight is our higher-end video creation solution. So if you don't want to create a video yourself, you can get the help from a professional videographer who will help you write a script, come to your site and film a video and in less than two hours you have a professional video up and running on your YouTube channel. At the moment, Director on Site is available in seven cities in the US and in two cities in the UK. And we are working on um, reaching full coverage in, within the US by the end of this year. So now we've talked a lot about how to get a video, how to set up a YouTube campaign, how to select the right targeting strategy. Now I want to talk a little bit more about how to measure the success of your YouTube um, campaigns. So measuring impact of brand campaigns in digital is still a challenge. When talking to marketeers, what we've heard are three main challenges they're facing. First of all, they're not measuring uh, the right metrics. So a common mistake is thinking that YouTube will drive direct conversions. And as we saw earlier, by looking at the funnel, YouTube is on top of the funnel working towards all the other products to drive those conversions. So it's not a direct conversion funnel. Second, industry research methodology leaves still room for improvement. And third, the results are often slow and not really actionable. So Google's solution here is so-called Google Brand Lift Survey. They allow you to assess the impact of branded activities and awareness. So what you can measure basically is everything from ad recall 
brand consideration, awareness, purchase intent, and favorability. All attributed to only one single campaign. So one big advantage is that it allows you to improve effectiveness mid-flight. So how does those brand lift service work? Well, Google selects two um, different groups. One is the actual group and one is the control group. The, um, the research group will see your ad, whereas the control group will see different ads. And then Google gathers all the responses and has uh, results as early as two weeks. So there are other different um, solutions of how you can measure your YouTube um, campaign performance. One is you can analyze direct visits via Google Analytics. You can also look at um, the lift in your search queries and the lift in sales via geographic A-B testing. So lastly, I want to cover uh, one important topic, the YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is where all your great video content lives. If you run a YouTube campaign, you will drive traffic not only to your website, but also to your YouTube channel. So you have to make sure your YouTube channel is in great shape. What I see happening in a lot of cases is that um, advertisers have linked the wrong YouTube channel. They've linked their personal YouTube channel. So the experience for the user is not really great because they are, they are directed into a YouTube channel where you have maybe your private Justin Bieber videos or family videos up and running. So it's not really the best experience. What we recommend is you want to optimize your channel and your videos for organic engagement. What does that mean? So basically you want to rearrange your YouTube channel like a storefront. You want to leverage our interactive features to drive additional referral traffic and you want to be searchable on YouTube. And I will dive into the specifics right away. So a YouTube channel is similar to a store. A store has a sign that um, specifies what this store is selling. Your YouTube channel should too. A store is also organized so that the customer finds the various products they're looking for in an easy way. Usually think about like a department store. You have the section where you can buy bread. You have the section where you can buy frozen food. So you know where to find what you're looking for. Same thing for a YouTube channel. So the key takeaway is the easier you make it for a user to navigate, the longer they will spend on your YouTube channel and consume your content. A few actionable tips here. We recommend um, adding a YouTube channel trailer to introduce your company. You can leverage fresh content or you can incentivize users to subscribe to your channel. Again, we talked about this, organize your channel so that users can navigate easily, create sections and subsections, especially if you have a company um, or a business that has a broad product um, portfolio, you want to you wanna organize the channel to like fit the various product um, sections. Lastly, add custom video thumbnails um, to your videos so that you encourage users to watch. What we see is that 90% of the best performing videos on YouTube, they're using a custom video thumbnail. Don't underestimate referral traffic. Leverage all our interactive features to help drive referral traffic to your website. One is the end screens. They are great to drive additional engagement. End screens will appear after your video uh, finished playing. You can promote your content, your website, or your channel. Another one is the call to action overlay that drives users to your website. So it basically is the doorstep from the YouTube platform to your website. The call to action overlay will show at the beginning of the video as soon as the video starts playing. So what advertisers often forget is that YouTube is a search engine too. And what we've heard earlier, it's the second largest search engine after Google. So you want to optimize your content like you're doing with your organic search ads. You want to make sure that your videos, the title is concise, attention grabbing, and um, summarizes the video in basically one word. You want to add one or two um, lines of description so that the users know and understand what they're about to watch. And you want to add tags to help people find your content and be sure to keep them up to date. So that brings me to my last point. Um, I know we've covered a lot of ground in the past um, few minutes and it might feel overwhelming because we have um, a lot of different targeting strategies. We have a lot of different ad formats and measurement opportunities. That brings me to my final recommendation. 
get the help you need from a Google partner. There's tremendous value in working with Google partners and I really hope you will contact one to help you get started on YouTube. Thanks very much for being with us today. I wish everyone best of luck with their online advertising pursuits. Awesome. Thanks, Bettina, for highlighting some of the key opportunities that folks can take into account right away. Next up, we have our live Q&A session. We begin keep keeping track of your questions on Twitter, and we'll do our best to answer as many as we can. It's not too late to ask. Just use hashtag Partners Connect. Let's go ahead and get started. Awesome. So our first question is from Emily from Miami. What are the best practices for creating videos on YouTube? So one of the best practice is that in terms of video format, we recommend videos that are about 30 seconds long. And as Tabitha um, highlighted earlier, you want to make the first five seconds engaging. Make sure you have your brand out there. Um, make sure the videos include a call to action. What do you want the user to do after watching the video? Do you want them to purchase? Do you want them to subscribe? Do you want them to fill out a form? Really make sure you highlight whatever action you want them to take. Awesome. Next up, Joe from Austin wants to know, how do I set up com companion banners and call to action overlays? Do I need to have an AdWords account? I'll take that one. Awesome. It's a great question, Joe. So um, we covered four formats today. That was a skippable, the six second bumper ads, companion banner, uh, companion banner and call to action overlay. All four of them require you to set up in your Google AdWords account. Now something specific to mention is for companion banners and the call to action overlay, it's going to be crucial for you to actually link that with your YouTube channel. So Bettina gave you some best practices about how you would go about setting that channel up. Um, and for those particular formats, the two, it will be required that you uh, link it with your YouTube channel. Perfect. Awesome. So Olivia from Los Angeles asks, how should I, fly, how should I fight, flight, fight my skippable and bumper ads to make the most of my investment? Great question. So what we recommend is that you use your skippable ad to introduce your business. So it should be your first YouTube campaign um, to get started and then use bumper ads to remind advertisers and to keep them to keep your brand basically on top of your mind. You can leverage them with a remarketing strategy. That's usually one of our internal best practices. Perfect. Next up, Denise from Seattle. On search, I pay for every time someone clicks on my ad. How does pricing work for YouTube? I can like, take that one as well. <laughs> okay. um, so pricing is a cost per view pricing model. And as Tabitha um, already highlighted is that you pay after someone watches 30 seconds of more or more of your content, just to put this into perspective. So um, for a Facebook video ad, you pay after someone watches three seconds. So it's like a different level of engagement. And mm -hmm. we at YouTube, we take a lot of pride in making sure we only make advertisers pay for really engaged viewers. So it's either someone that watches 30 seconds or more or interacts with your video in a different way. Like for example, clicking on a companion banner, clicking on the call to action overlay. So interact with your video in some way or the other. That's awesome. Next up, Carlos from San Francisco. What is the process for a director on site? Will someone really come out to make an ad for us? Yes, <laughs> we get this question a lot. So director on site um, basically is a website where you can sign up. Um, you can select your, your city. Um, they automatically connect you to a videographer that's um, in your area. The videographer will reach out, uh, will help you via phone to um, create a great script. Um, and then um, schedule a date where that works for you. They will come to your business and they will set everything up. They have all the equipment they need to create that video. You just need yourself, your awesome storefront, <laughs> maybe your employees, some of your customers um, to, to tell your story. Sweet. One thing I'll plug in there, we recently launched the youtube.com slash ads website. Um, and on that site, you can see some great examples of ads that have actually leveraged a YouTube on site uh, service to create awesome ads. Perfect. Next up, Cameron asks, can you regulate the demographics of viewers if you advertise on YouTube? Yes, great question. Um, so you can start with an A-B test. So you can um, A-B test various demographics that work for your company. If you're not really sure, it's a great way to um, understand a little bit more um, who are the engaged viewers. So um, let's say you target um, 
everyone that is between 15 years old and 30 years old. Mm -hmm. So you will be able after a few days to see um, where your engaged viewers are coming from. Maybe it's like um, your video talks a little bit more to like the 25 to 30 year old. So you will be able to modify on the go. Perfect. And we got our first question from, uh, from across the border in Canada. Lev Preet from Toronto asks, can we bid in YouTube to increase our reach and visibility as we do in AdWords? Yes. So maybe <laughs> I. So do you want to? No, go for it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm on, on a roll here. You are. Um, Nailing so it. So <laughs> basically, um, what, what uh, a lot of people forget is that a YouTube campaign basically runs in your AdWords account. So you're able to make whatever modifications and adjustments you want mid flight. So you're able to um, increase, decrease bids, um, to increase and decrease targeting um, to like optimize your campaign as you go. Awesome. Alex from Houston says he's watching the live stream. Thank you, Alex. Can you give an example of a custom affinity? Sure. Custom <laughs> affinity is um, a target audience that we uh, really recommend, that we saw really, really great results um, with. So. Um, let's say you have um, a company that um, is a little bit more like a niche. So if, if you're familiar with our in-market segments, um, they're like broad segments, people that are in market for purchasing like consumer goods, electronics. If you have a little bit of a more niche product, you want to use custom affinity. And you can create a custom affinity by using a combination of five to six URLs that are relevant for your business, where you know your potential target audience is really present, and five to six keywords. And what our algorithm does is it groups everything together and it shows you a representation of what that target audience would look like. Mm -hmm. So it really shows you how many people um, from various different um, age groups would be uh, included in that custom affinity audience. So I would really, really recommend, highly recommend to, to set it up. Awesome. Seems people are pretty excited about the on-site. Uh, <laughs> and Kelsey from Minneapolis wants to know if we can share the markets that Director On-Site is currently operating in. Um, sharing in the sense of like what, 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 what are those cities? cities? What are those cities? Like New York. Um, so we have we're currently present in New York, um, Atlanta, San Francisco, Chicago, um, Portland. I'm not quite sure. I have to <laughs> I have to double check on the website, but it's like the main cities in the U.S. Mm -hmm. But we will soon be present in like. Um, basically every city in the US that you can imagine. That's and not to cool. give you any homework, but if you do a quick Google search <laughs> on um, director on site, all seven cities are listed. Perfect. Next, <laughs> Sage Frog Marketing asks, any best practices for B2B video marketing? Mm, that's a good question. Yeah, a good it's one. a good question. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we usually recommend um, very, very narrow targeting. So. Um, starting probably with uh, a combination of remarketing and uh, in-market segments. Mm -hmm. So if you set up remarketing, you basically have a list of um, everyone that has been on your website before, so that showed previously showed an interest in what you have to offer. Especially what we see with B2B is the customer journey is a whole lot longer. Mm -hmm. So um, you want to make sure you capture that user and you can re-engage him with a video, especially B2B, like they usually have complexer more complex business model so video is a great opportunity to um, to talk about the product in an easy digestible way so start with a combination of remarketing and in market because if you if you think about the funnel that we talked about they are more like the the bottom of the funnel so you want to make sure it's like only the the very relevant people perfect next up McKay advertising is a little bit confused about the difference between behavior and interest targeting and content targeting what's the difference there you're nailing it. So, uh, <laughs> you know, my mom always says when someone's nailing, you just let them keep on failing. So. <laughs> Um, it's a great question and uh, it's what a lot of people get confused with. So basically, interest-based targeting here, you target the interests of users. Whereas with content targeting, you're targeting the content of the video your ad pre-rolls in front. So let's say um, 
on the YouTube platform. All the videos that are uploaded that are, re that are related to automotive, they are placed into the content category automotive. So you as an advertiser, you can say, I want my videos only to pre-roll in front of automotive related videos, mm -hmm. so this is what you're selecting. Whereas on, in on the interest-based segment, you're targeting people that are actively in market for like looking online, they're based on their purchase behavior, our system knows that they are interested in purchasing a new car. So it's like the content mm -hmm. of the video that you put your video in front versus the interest of uh, the user based on their search behavior online. Perfect. Um, more interest for on-site. Cowan Cinematography wants to know, how do you choose what companies will film for you? And I think what they're getting at is how do we ensure that the videos are going to be produced are quality? Yes. Great question. Mm -hmm. um, we have actually um, videographers working for Google that are certified um, to create videos. So we only have really professional videographers that are coming to your site. Um, they undergo a training before they are coming to you. Um, so they really have in-depth knowledge about all the specifics that you need to take into account when creating a video. Perfect. And I think with that, we're just about out of time for, for questions. Um, I wanted to thank both of you. I found it extremely informative myself and really appreciated hearing from you. Um, and with that, we'd like to kind of thank all of you for joining us across uh, North America as well. Um, we hope you found the uh, live stream today informative, but whether you did or didn't, we'd love to hear your feedback. Um, please share your thoughts with us on Twitter or at g.co slash partners connect feedback. Now as one last reminder, the partners in the room are all really true experts on all the topics we covered today and more than ready to assist you in setting up and managing your YouTube campaigns. Um, we thank you again for spending this past hour with, past hour with us and on behalf of all of us here in Mountain View, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your week.